Hello, welcome to my channel. I think today I've got a really good video for you. A while back, I did a drill press rebuild and there was one thing that was really unique about it and that was the drill chuck and spindle combination. One didn't work without the other and I, I have some footage I ran across, video footage, and I thought it would really be neat to uh, see how this thing worked. And the best way to make to see how things work is to tear it apart. Let's take this thing apart. Let's do this. Okay, I think this is where we're going to begin. Uh, this is what the drill press looked like when I first brought it home. <laughs> Old, dirty. Anyway, it was manufactured by the Miller's Falls Company. Uh, patent date, February 6, 1900. I think that thing is awesome. It's that old and it's still around. First of all, I want to show you how those jaws work. I don't know if you can see that thread on there. Real fine thread. As that moves up and back through the chuck housing, it pushes on the jaws. You'll see the jaws come out further and further as it goes up that thread until it is zero. It's grabbing the smallest drill it can. And as you bring it out, the chuck jaws go in. So it tells me there's some kind of spring mechanism in here. Before I take the chuck apart, I want to take this spindle off of here. It looks as though there's a slotted set screw in here. And I bet you that has something to do with holding this spindle together. We'll find out. Comes out pretty easy. Yeah. It looks like a little dog point set screw, slotted set screw. There the bearings. Little bearing race. This it goes on the bottom of this. It allows this to spin. I guess that uh, little dog point set screw goes through here and into this groove. Okay, let's start taking this apart. Okay, let me show you those jaws again. Thread. As you spin it, jaws come out, get tighter. See, what makes this different than the Jacobs chuck that was in, uh, patented in uh, 1902 was these jaws just go everywhere. They're just in there. He made little tracks, as you see on um, the modern Chucks.
I guess the next thing would be is to take this apart. Nothing's going to fly out, I hope. Nope. That's hollow. There seems to be a point on there. It's like a center. It centers in that hollow tube. This is two pieces. And there seems to be another set screw. This is the part. <laughs> there has to be a spring of some sort in there. It is a screw. Screws into this here part, it looks like. Now, hopefully the sp spring and stuff doesn't come flying out. It doesn't seem like much pressure. Okay. There are little grooves in a center plate. I see. There's three jaws with springs, and there are little grooves. Hopefully these weren't numbered. Here's the part I was telling you. It's it centers on here. All right. Clean all these up. It looks as though these parts are individuals. I mean, they look like little stamping parts that go into the jaws, and it looks like it was swedged in there with a rivet of some sort. Same like that. And like. Okay. This chuck was manufactured, designed and manufactured by uh, the Miller's Falls Company. People who designed, patented the whole drill. I just remember, and <laughs> I'll run a little clip of uh, that video where I was looking at it going, this thing seems to be all froze up and I'm going to have to soak it. But as you see, it not froze up. I just didn't understand how it worked. Okay, it's all taken apart. I think that's a pretty unique chuck, how it all works and all the jaws are in there. It's not quite like a modern chuck, but it seems to work. Now that I got the whole thing taken apart, I have cleaned it, wire brushed it, polished it, and it's time to put back together. Let's see if I can do that. 
all the pieces to the spindle and the chuck are all cleaned up. I think we're going to start with loading the bearings in here. Take the take it and put the spindle together. Just going to add some uh this is <laughs> extreme pressure lube. Uh there's no extreme pressure here, but it's what I have. That's what I'm going to use. You'll hold the bearings in there. And of course the bearing race. Now the chuck. I think I'm going to put grease in each one of those little spring pockets to help the springs to stay in place. First thing that come to mind when the springs were coming out was, boy, it's going to be fun putting it back together. Okay, the springs are in there. I tried this once, it didn't really work that well. I'm going to try it this way. Put it in, hold it. Put it in. That looks pretty good. I'll put a little grease on the side of each one of these because this is what slides down that thing. It wasn't too bad. There's a little thread in this hair where this screw goes on and so this doesn't turn. Keeps it locked in there. All right, jaws are in there. And the last part, put this spindle into the chuck I got to take that apart at least four times before I can get this these jaws to go in there just right. The springs kept moving, and uh, I got it, and it opens and closes like it should. Ugh. Drill goes out. Drill goes in. It's all good. Well, it looks like the spindle chuck combination went together just fine. I remember doing this three, four years ago, and it was really interesting learning how something like that from the early 1900s actually worked. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Glenn Nowakowski, and this is Glenn now on YouTube. Until next time, enjoy.